Hi there. Welcome to this series of tutorials on JUnit. In these tutorials, we'll discuss what JUnit is, what unit testing is. JUnit is one of the widely used unit testing frameworks. So we'll learn what J unit testing is and how can you do unit testing with JUnits. And we'll look at uh, the different features which are present in JUnit. And at the end, we'll look at what a good JUnit is. And uh, let's get started. Uh, in this uh, video, let's look at uh, what a JUnit is. We'll understand what unit testing is. And let's try and write our first unit test as well. Let's take a small example. I have a sm small piece of code present. Uh, there's a string helper class, which I'm going to write the test for. And it has a method called truncate A in first two positions. What this is basically doing is if you have A in first two positions of the string, then it basically removes it from the string. And the rest of the string is left untouched. So if I pass input as A, B, C, D, since it has one A in the first two characters, it removes that A and the output would be B, C, D. And if I have A, A, C, D, that first two characters are A, those are truncated, it's C, D. And if you look at this one, the second character is A, that's truncated, so B, A, C, D. And here, uh, the first two characters are A, those are truncated. And if you have something like, let's say, nothing with A's at all, M, N, and A, A. Um, this has A's, but A's after the first two characters. This would remain M, N, A, A. So, this is basically what the method is doing. I've uh, given a basic implementation to this method. The implementation is not very important right now. But basically, this is what I tried to implement. I've tried to implement uh, a functionality where you truncate A in the first two positions. So now, uh, let's say this is part of a web application which is being tested. The usual way we would test this is, let's say, uh, the this functionality is present in the fifth screen of the web application. So we basically probably create the ER, deploy it, and then go through the screens and see the functionality is working fine. And if there's a defect, you have to come here, change the code, uh, probably, let's say instead of A, probably this should be something else, whatever, this should have been B, whatever, uh, and then rebuild the ER, deploy it, and then test the functionality after going to that particular screen. That's basically the usual way of doing testing. That's called screen testing. Usually, some people call it also uh, integration testing, something of that kind. But uh, over a period of time, what has happened is something new called unit testing has come into picture. Unit testing is where I would just basically test this method in isolation, passing inputs to it. So I would focus on just testing units. I mean, it, the unit can be a single method or it can even be a combination of methods. Uh, so here in this particular situation that we are talking about, we are talking about testing a particular method. So the, the unit which we are going to test is a particular method. So what we are going to do during our unit testing using JUnit is pass different inputs to this method and see if the output we get is as expected. So let's get started. Let's create our first JUnit test. Uh, you can do file new uh, JUnit test case. That's the simplest way to get started. Uh, the one thing you need to take care of is your test files should be in a different folder compared to your source files. You don't want to mix your source and your test files. Test files are not actually deployed. I mean, you don't need to really make it part of the deployable unit. So they don't need to be part of the EAR. So I would have them separate in a separate test folder. And I would create generally the test in the same package as the source file. So we are testing string helper and that's in the package com.repos.jnit.example. So I can need to use the same package for this particular test as well. And the name of the test usually is the name of the class and test. I mean, this is usually what people follow, but uh, this is not a stand. I mean, it's not something you need to definitely follow or something of that kind because Certain people also have the tendency of writing multiple test classes for a single class. So, yeah, uh, but basically, if when you're getting started, you can start off saying class name and test. And I'll leave the rest of the stuff as it is and click finish. So, good. So, 
Eclipse has created me this test. What uh, like let's just try and run this JUnit test and see what happens. So run JUnit test. Okay, it fails. That's good. It's failing because the first line of the test is something called fail. But before we get there, I'll just remove this line. Before we get there, uh, a few let's discuss a few things about what is present in here. So the, one of the most important things you would see is the annotation add test. This annotation actually tells that this method which we are going to write is a test condition. Once you have a test test condition, then when you do a right click run as JUnit, that particular test is run. So now I'm writing a test. Uh, what are we going to test? So that's basically what we need to put in here. But before that, uh, I don't have anything in this particular test. So there is nothing which is written in this particular test. And if you do run as JUnit test, Okay, that's the first thing about JUnits is, is the JUnit test would succeed. This is called the green bar or that's basically the success bar if you don't have anything in the test. So success is actually absence of failure. So a JUnit test is success when there are no failures present in that particular uh, method. So if you don't have any conditions at all in the test, then it's a success. A JUnit test is a failure if you have one condition and that particular condition fails. So that's one thing we should remember. Uh, a test always passes unless there is a condition which fails. So let's put more conditions in here. Uh, let's start. I'm going to t write a test condition for this particular method. So let's start actually uh, the convention is test and the method name you're going to test. So let's go ahead and write our first test. What we want to test is the string helper class. So let me go ahead and create an instance of that class string helper uh, helper is equal to new string helper. So that's uh, basically the class that we want. And what we want to test is the method helper dot uh, truncate a in first two positions. I'm passing an input. The input I want to pass is let's say I'll start with the uh, condition where I have uh, different characters in the first two positions R, T and let's say I have putting A, A and the expected output is also R, T, A, A. So uh, what I'm expecting out of the uh, expected output is R, T, A and string when I call this method whatever I get is what we call the actual output. So the actual output is whatever we get when we call this method. So now I have expected output, actual output, and JUnit allows me actually by a method called assert equals to compare the expected output and the actual output. So let me just do that. So what are we doing here? So here what we are doing is comparing a expected output with the actual output. This asset equals is a method which compares these two values. Uh, if these two values match, that's a success. But if these two values do not match, that's a failure. Just to understand uh, the asset equals method, I would just write a simple test, uh, public void test asset equals and let's go ahead and write some piece of code in there. Uh, assert equals, I'm just going to put something in there. Assert equals ABC, comma ABC. So these are equal. So let's just run something else. So I would actually write and try to run this test. For running the test is right click run as JUnit test. So now let's look at what happens. You can see that JUnit fails. So because ABC is not equal to ABCD, what JUnit does is it the uh, framework does it throws a failure. So also the good thing is if you click the line, it shows whatever exactly is failing. And the other important thing you can actually see is that it clearly points out what's wrong. So it's saying expected ABC, but was ABCD. So uh, this is always one thing to remember: the first value that you pass is the expected value. The second one should be the actual one. So expected ABC, but getting this. 
But let's say if I pass in both the same thing and run the JUnit test, you'd see that the test would have succeeded. I've run both the tests, but this test has succeeded. And also the good thing about JUnit is, let's say I have four or five conditions, or I'm not sure if this is a good thing, but another thing about JUnit is, if the fourth condition fails, let's say I am putting a failure in the fourth condition, all the other conditions would pass. So if I see, double click on this line, it would exactly take me to the fourth condition. But the most important thing is the fifth condition is not run at all. So this condition is not tested at all. So usually it's not good to have more than one conditions to be tested in a single J unit because if let's say the first one failed, let's say I'll make this one to fail all shift X one J unit test. If this one failed, actually the entire test would be a failure. Uh, because it, the other conditions would run and you wouldn't even know whether the other conditions succeeded or not. So uh, let's put them aside now and let's go back to the thing which we are working on. So now uh, let's run this test and see if it succeeds. That's good. So this, succeed, this is succeeding. To make it simple, I'll remove the key, uh, inline these things. And yeah, so I said equals RTA. Let's say I'm passing in a different input. Uh, let's say I'm passing A, A, B, B. Sorry, the input is on the other side. So it's, uh, let's say I'm passing A, A, B, B. I have two A's in the first two positions. In the first two positions, A's get truncated. So I should get the output as this. Uh, let's add one more condition. Uh, I'll put a B, A, B, B. So the output should be the A in the second position gets truncated and it should be a B, B, B. So let's just run this test and see if it succeeds. That's good. So that's basically the uh, your first JUnit test. What we are, what as you see, JUnit helps us to pass an input to a method or a group of methods, and then test whether their output is working as expected. So, due to this uh, JUnit framework, unit testing becomes very easy. And the best part of the whole thing is whenever you are going to modify this method and you make a mistake while modifying the method. As soon as you run the JUnit test, you know which condition is failing. So uh, there you go. That's uh, your first uh, lesson on JUnit. We are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.